and girls, Miss Kathy here from Shaler Library, and we are doing the activity section of Day of the Dragon King, our latest magic treehouse book that we read. So if you either printed out the activity sheets yourself, or you picked up a copy at the library, they start with the first craft is a Chinese dragon puppet, and you received a template for the head and the tail of the puppet, which you had to cut out in color, and I have done that here. So we're going to go on and look at what the next step is. It says cut three 12 inch pieces of crepe paper. I have also done that. It recommends using red, orange, and yellow. I didn't have red, orange, and yellow, so I used white, purple, and red. So you can use whatever colors you have. You don't have to do exactly the same as the directions. Then the next part says, lightly fold the cray paper in half. So we're taking it this way and we're folding it long ways like that. And then it says fold in half again. So we're gonna fold it in half again and then fold in half once more. So we have a little piece like that. Then it says cut each piece of cray paper in half lengthwise. That would be going this way. So we're breaking it into two pieces. And then it says we will have six 12 inch pieces of cray paper. I'm not sure why we have six 12 inch pieces of crepe paper now. Oh, for each color, that's what we're doing. So now we have this one and we have this one for white. And we're gonna do that same thing with the other colors. So whatever colors you used at home, they wanna roll up so it's a little tricky to fold them. You know, fold it in half once, fold it in half twice, Fold it in half again. And we're cutting it this way. And if you need some help with cutting, make sure you ask an adult at home to help you. And then we have a red piece. Snip this off here. I'm gonna fold in half, in half again and in half one more time and make that same cut up the middle. So now we do have our six pieces of crepe paper. Next thing is for the body, stick three pieces of crepe paper on top of each other. So we're gonna use one of each color. We'll take a purple and a red and my white. Fold into an accordion shape approximately a half inch wide. So we're gonna do a lot of folding with this. An accordion shape is like a zigzag shape, in and out, in and out. Let's see if we can get this. One of them's a little longer than the other. We're gonna fold this way and then fold back that way, and this way, and that way. It's about a half inch wide, they said. And we keep folding. Three pieces of crepe paper on top of each other, fold into a turn colored dragon head and body over. So we wanna turn, once we get this all folded up here, you can see what I'm doing. I'm just keep folding and folding, making little tiny creases in it, pressing on both sides so the crease is a little bit better. Then it says turn the head and body over Take the ends of the three pieces of accordion crepe paper to the back of the head. 
take the other end of the accordion crepe paper to the back side of the tail. So, get out my tape. I'll pick this up and on the end here where I have all three colors. If it didn't work out exactly evenly, we can cut off the extra so that they end up all taped on there together. I'm going to tape all three of them at once to the back of the head. Like that, to the back. And then it says, tape the other end to the back side of the tail. Okay, we can do that. I think they wanted to keep kind of the accordion fold to it though. So let's keep them together as an accordion with some bends in it. And then we're gonna tape this down here. So that we have that kind of a shape. Then the next step on it is Cut the extra three pieces of crepe paper in half lengthwise, and then in half again. So we're making smaller pieces. I'm gonna fold it in half once and cut that. And then I'm gonna fold it in half again and cut that. So I end up with four pieces of one color. I'm going to do the same thing with purple. It says each piece is about three inches long when you're all done. Folding the purple one in half, cutting that. Then folding it in half again, and cutting that. And lastly, I'm going to do that with my white one. Okay, so then I have four pieces of each color. Cut the edges of the smaller pe pe pieces to create fringe. So fringe is when you make little cuts in them. You don't go too far in, and it just kind of hangs down there at the bottom without cutting anything off. So get your three pieces and just make a couple snips in the bottom of them. You're not cutting anything off. Just kind of make them a little bit loose, small cuts at the bottom. See, we're trying this together. I've never made one of these before either. And sometimes directions can be a little bit confusing, even for big people, because it's hard to write down on paper what you're doing with your hands for those who are making the directions. Tape these pieces to the back of the dragon to hang off the bottom. So we're gonna just stick them on there however we want, hanging off the bottom. We've got a whole bunch of these. We could put them together the same way we had the middle strip. You can do it however you want, but I'm going to put one of each color and tape that on. I should end up, if I make packs with one of each color in it, I should end up with four of those packs. So I'm going to put two on the head area here. You have to make sure if you're taping all three colors on at once that your tape actually goes onto all three colors. If you have them stacked up really on top of each other, it might only be touching the one that's on the back. You have to spread them out a little bit so that it touches everything. And remember, you want to keep the fringy part down on the bottom. So two from the head is what I'm doing. You don't have to do it like that. And then two from the tail.
picture shows you what they did. And again, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do crafts. And one last set. One, two, three. And I don't have the same colors on top all the time so that it'll look a little bit different from the front. Sometimes you'll see one color, sometimes you'll see another. And that again is okay. So then you were also supposed to have a straw that says, take one straw or popsicle stick to the head and one to the tail with enough hanging off to grab it so that you can manipulate your puppet. So I have a straw that I cut in half and I'm now going to tape it to my tail, leaving some hang off to make a handle, like it says. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing on the head. says last direction is enjoy your puppet. So we have one that looks like that. And that's kind of the way they walk through the streets when they have Chinese New Year parades and they have dragon floats and things. And one person's carrying a piece up top and there may be some other people in the middle carrying the middle saggy part and somebody carrying the end piece. And they walk along the street and they move the dragon like it's a real dragon. So that is your dragon puppet. Okay, you can make more than one of those too and then they can have friends. That was the first activity. The next one was Chinese counting. Copy the numbers in the spaces from one to 10 for extra practice, answer the questions on the side too. So let's do this part together. I brought a pencil because I know I often make mistakes, so I'm going to write in pencil. Number one, doesn't look too hard. I'm gonna draw a line and come up here. This is what the Chinese number looks like in that column. That's what our number looks like. And now we're supposed to try it in this column. So number two, you have two of those lines. That's one line, that's two. One's shorter than the other. And then for the number three, you have three of those lines. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here if I'm not pressing harder. Now the three is interesting. The top line is a little longer, then the middle line is shorter, and the bottom line is the same length as the top line. So it's got a middle on there. Okay, number four. Kind of reminds me of a swing set with some swings hanging off there. Looks like a little house or something, maybe with windows. I'm gonna do a couple of these on my own here and you can work on them on your sheet and then I'll show you what mine look like. Little six looks like a person doing a jumping jack. That's pretty cool. Seven looks kind of like a T. Eight looks like a volcano or something, doesn't it? Nine. And then 10 is like a different type of tea. So this is what I ended up when I did that. Your age, you can fill in here, your grade. I'm not in a grade, so I can't do that one. How many feet tall are you to the nearest foot? You have to round. So. I'm going to have to go with five for that one. I'm going to put the number five on that line because you can use these numbers then to actually answer questions. How many days in one week? That's the T, number seven. Another number you know, like your favorite number. Hmm don't know that I have a favorite number, but I like the volcano one, so I'm gonna draw another number eight. Okay, 
Okay, so that was a Chinese counting sheet, and you can use that to practice as many times as you want or to answer some other questions. Maybe you can get some questions from family members. Okay, next thing on the list was the craft of the bamboo strip book. And a bamboo book was very important to Jack and Annie in the Day of the Dragon King. So this one tells you to write on the sticks. We have some craft sticks here, popsicle sticks. Write on them going up and down. So you want to put the letters one on top of each other instead of next to each other like we do when we make our words. Chinese people go up and down on the page. And included in the packet was a sample of some words that you might want to be able to start to use to make a story if you want to write a book. There are probably thousands of words with pictures to go along with them in the Chinese alphabet that you can look up on the internet. I just printed out one sheet to give you an idea of some of the characters because some of them we did the numbers are pretty tricky to draw though I think. So I'm going to put some of these characters on my strip going down. You can make your book as long as you want and you can write the story. I'm just going to do a few on this strip to give you a sample of what you're doing. Because some of them are very tricky and it's hard to make skinny on a popsicle stick. But if I do a few of them, here I see the number seven. That's what we had on our other sheet. But you can think about what you want to write, what story, and then look up the words on the internet if the words aren't on this sheet and then you'd be able to use that to make your whole story. Water is tricky. Water looks like it's flowing down a waterfall or something. That is a hard one to fit. So I'm just doing this as a sample. I'm not actually writing a very good story. In fact, my story probably doesn't make any sense at all, but you can think about a better story that you would like to do and take the time to write it down for real. I don't want you to have to sit there while I write the whole story. So I did a couple samples with Chinese symbols on the strips. And then the next set of directions says, turn the sticks over and place them side by side in the order that you want them to make up your story. So I'm gonna put those ones face down and I'm going to line up the other ones next to it. Even though I didn't write on the other ones, I'm going to put them there just because I want to show you how you make the book. And I will hold up the camera and let you see once I'm done, because I know it's hard to see when I'm working on this flat surface here. Okay, then it says, glue pieces of yarn across the back, one across the top, one across the bottom, and one in the middle. When the glue dries, you can roll up your book and carry it with you like Jack and Annie were doing. I am not going to glue it because I want to be able to hold it up right away and show you. So I'm going to use these pieces of yarn here and tape it on. You need a piece in the middle. Now again, you're going to be gluing this and leaving it sit there to dry. But since I want to show you how this works, you have to kind of carefully stretch the yarn. Across all the sticks. And when you're gluing, you have to make sure you get glue on every stick or else it's not going to work. You'll pick up one and it'll fall off. I'm going to make my yarn a little bit bigger than the sticks just because then I'd have an end to grab onto. And the sticks sometimes get a little bent so it's hard to keep them all together. Might need somebody to help you with the gluing part because it's tricky. Make sure you get your yarn on all of the sticks and leave it sit nice and still then so it has a chance to dry. Too. That's important. 
because if you pick it up too soon, they're going to come off. Just like anything else you glue, huh? You have to make sure you let it dry. You have to have a little bit of patience, which can be very hard sometimes when you want to see how something finishes up. Okay, almost done here with this one. Okay. So then I can pick it up and let's see if we can roll it up. If there was writing on each of these, you would roll it, I guess, so that you can start reading your book on the end one and then unroll it as you go. Actually, you want to do it like this because they go top to bottom, huh? But that is how you would roll up your bamboo stick book. So you can make it as long as you want. Like I said, you can make as many of them one as you want. And if you don't want to glue it, now you know that tape works too. It just makes a little bit of a crinkly sound when you're trying to roll it up, which the glue wouldn't, I'm sure. Okay, and there's a link to show you some other Chinese characters. Or make up your own. You can do that too when you're pretending, huh? And then the last activity, which you can do with somebody at home, was Chinese checkers. And it tells you the directions on the one sheet, and it gives you a board for being able to print out and play Chinese checkers and the marker pieces. You might want to make it on a little bit thicker paper so that you have easier time maneuver maneuvering the pieces around on it, but you can just use regular paper too. And you can go through and play a fun Chinese game with people. So, hopefully you were able to get those packets and do some of those activities. And there are a lot of other Chinese crafts on the internet if you want to check them out and do any more. Okay? So, thank you for watching the Magic Treehouse activities and hopefully reading the book along with us. Stay tuned next week. We are going to do another book and another activity, and this one has to do with a ship on the water. I'm not going to tell you the exact name, but a ship on the water that had some bad things happen on board. So stay tuned and find out what that one will be. This has been Miss Kathy from Shaler North Hills Library. Bye!